Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Nineteen seventy Porsche nine fourteen dash six, meaning that this is the actual Porsche six cylinder. So explain to the viewers why in the heck are we in Germany driving a classic Porsche? Porsche invited us to drive these nine fourteens as part of their fifty years of mid engine Porsches. So we are in Germany, just around Stuttgart area. Not really sure exactly where we are right now. Oh, and we should probably mention we're staying at the V eight hotel. Yeah, so shout out for the coolest name ever. Um, every room is themed with vehicles, well, some of the rooms are. I am staying in a podium room. So Jacob's obviously first place. And I'm in a Mercedes-Benz room that's actually a car wash. That is the coolest thing ever. But earlier we did go to the museum. So we checked out the Porsche Museum, saw a bunch of classics, basically where Porsche started. Saw the first Porsche ever, which was mid-engined. And a lot of people, 911 purists, you're probably gonna be upset because you're gonna think it's rear-engined. It was mid-engined first, and then later they made it rear-engined. Yeah, the museum's so cool. They had all the famous Porsches that we grew up watching on YouTube and stuff. Moby Dick, they had like all the cool ones. My favorite one was the RSR. That thing is so cool with the Martini livery. It was the best. So let's talk about this one. Yuri's driving. This is our first drive in the six cylinder. And this is the oldest car we've ever reviewed. Yes, it is. It's a 1970. And we briefly drove the four cylinder version of this. So let's get into a little bit of history. So the reason there's a four cylinder is because it was combined with Volkswagen. So it was a VW Porsche 914. And so Porsche got the six cylinders. So depending on where you were in the world, I believe only North America, it was always badged as a Porsche, even if it was a four cylinder or a six cylinder. So give me the power numbers of this six cylinder. 110 horsepower. And since we're in Europe, 81 kW. And how about the four cylinder? 85 horsepower and 63 kW. I do not have the torque figures, but there you go. And the silver one is the four cylinder, the blue one is the six cylinder. Yes, so we are gonna show you rolling shots of the four cylinder, but we are currently in the six cylinder, which is yeah. the blue one. Yo, I'm gonna floor it. Send it. <laughs> I'm sending it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely not the fastest, but it already feels a little bit faster than the four cylinder. It, it definitely feels more responsive and you get newer features in this one that we didn't get in the old one. For example, the seatbelts are normal in here, where in the four cylinder, they were crazy. Yeah, it was really difficult to adjust the seatbelts in the four cylinder and even to unlatch them. It's very interesting. Everything's very different from regular cars. It's really cool to see where cars have come because we also drove the 718 Boxster T and the Cayman T. So it's cool to see where Porsche is now compared to what we're driving from 1970. Okay, so let's start this off with the looks. Do you like it? I didn't at first, but the more I saw perfect specimens at the museum, the more I got into it. Yeah, it looks okay. It's definitely kind of the ugly duckling of the Porsche bunch. The 911 is obviously the one that you want, but this one has its own cool characteristics for sure. Yeah, I think the coolest characteristics is you still get those kind of like fender flares like you had on the 911s, but they're way skinnier and they just have a little amber headlight at the end. Exactly, and that's not the amber headlight, that's the, amber the turn, turn signal. Exactly. We've got a flip up headlight. Yeah, so they actually made this in four cylinder, six cylinder, an eight cylinder. So there's two eight cylinders. One of them is in the museum right now and the other one travels around. They were built for Ferdinand Piech, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, and Ferry Porsche. So one had 260 horsepower and the other one had 300 horsepower. Okay, Yuri, <laughs> before we continue with looks, dog leg first into second for me, please. This is the weirdest shifter ever. I think I'm oh, in. Did you get it? Is it in? All right. Not in reverse. Turns out I wasn't in second because I was scared of missing shifts. But once you're in second, like you actually have some torque. There's definitely some torque in second. Show me how much slop there is in this shifter. Yeah, there's a lot of play. <laughs> there, I got second instead of fourth again. My bad, my goof. This is literally second gear. Yeah, you are in gear right now. <laughs> this is so scary to drive. It's kind of like the NASCAR. You get into gear, you leave it because you don't want to risk breaking it. This is literally a museum piece. So explain the dog leg shifter before we move on with the looks more. Okay, reverse is top left and then down for first and then up and to the right for second and then down for third. So I guess the theory is you're going to be using second and third the most, but like, it's me, very weird. Me not being from the 70s and used to normal cars, this is sketch. Yeah, we don't know the roads out here. We don't know how to drive this. It's our first oldest car that we've ever driven. And we're trying to keep up with new Boxster T's and Cayman T's. Yes. <laughs> so back to looks. Front end. 
front end is just very plain. It's very simple. It looks kind of like a rocket ship, but it still looks a little Porsche. So let's move to the side profile. I think that's my favorite because the belt line is so low. Yeah, it looks very sleek, very sharp body lines for back in the day. Yeah, like very simple again, very typical of Porsche. And they came in Targa because they wanted to make a convertible, but US regulations wouldn't allow convertibles to be built. So they had to make it a Targa, which kind of gives it a weird look, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's almost like it's wearing a toupee. And you can fit the Targa in the trunk. Yeah, so we currently have the roof up. Sorry if there's a little bit of wind noise, but we don't have air conditioning in here and it's quite hot. So now let's move on to the back. The back end is again, very plain. Yeah, and I'm okay with that because it's such a weird car. And you can't really see the engine because it's mid-engined. So if you look underneath the Porsche logo, you can actually see the engine a little bit in there. Yeah, so there's a trunk at the back and a trunk at the front. Frunk and trunk. And there's not really enough room for our carry-on bags, so we decided to just put them in a different Porsche. Yeah, so they're sitting in a new Cayman right now. Okay, now let's talk about the wheels. The wheels are so cool. They're traditional Porsche wheels, and I love driving a traditional Porsche with the wheels. I really like Fuchs-style wheels as are on the eight-cylinder. And is there anything else with the looks? Uh, the one thing that I would want to point out, not really looks-wise, but when you open the door, there's like this really jagged window edge that I'm very scared of nailing my face on, but I haven't done it yet. <laughs> and I want to talk about the handling a bit, because we've gone down some twisty roads, and it is surprisingly good for what it is. It kind of feels more like a go-kart, though. Yeah, it definitely feels like a go-kart with a really big engine. And a really thin steering wheel. <laughs> that will not fly off? No, not fly off while using it. And then like the, the brakes aren't that strong. Yeah, the brakes are the biggest thing that I noticed. Everything about this car is a pain, but it's kind of worth it to see it on the road. It's so cool. We've gotten so many thumbs up and I don't know if people see these in Germany, probably not, but I feel like they see more of them in Germany than they did in North America. Yeah, didn't they sell like 75% of all of them to North America? Well, they split them to Volkswagen and Porsche. So I think Volkswagen sold like 130,000 or something like that. And Porsche only sold like 3,000. Oh, wow. But even though it's very go-karty, every time I look down at my Speedo, I'm like at 100, which is so refreshing. Yeah, and shout out German speed limits. <laughs> They're actually the best out here. And then the last thing I noticed about driving this before I get you in the driver's seat, because this is quite the experience, is we've got the traditional, I guess because this is a traditional, Porsche tack. Right dead center. We've got an orange needle, white letters on black, they nailed it here and everybody's been screwing it up ever since. Every other company. Porsche has been nailing it since this time and before this, obviously. So all you other manufacturers, get on this level. Yeah, other manufacturers that happen to be from Germany as well. <laughs> BMW with your new gauge cluster going the opposite way. All right, I'm gonna pull over, get you in the driver's seat and we'll talk more about how crazy it is to drive and this wacky interior. I'm excited to tell you how I barely fit in here. <laughs> Go baby, go! Second. Oh, hey, nailed it! No didn't, problem! Didn't break the car! No problem! Okay, so when you accidentally stalled it there, did you notice that the key was on the left side? I did actually, because this is a Porsche and not a Volkswagen. So the Volkswagens have the key on the right side? Yes, they do. And that's how you know the difference between a four-cylinder and a six-cylinder as well. Pretty much. Okay, so let's talk about driving this. First of all, driving position, very low, but still kind of high. So not like current Porsches where the dash is really high, we just have like a nice big green space. It's got that nice low uh, Panamera seating that you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. This is where they got it from. Yeah. Now let's talk about how I fit. I barely fit in here. The seat does go back. I'm not at full extension, so I've actually moved it up a little bit. But the shifter, because of the dog leg and because the pedals are offset to the right, it's really difficult to shift into first and the steering wheel also is hitting my legs. Yeah, for me, I was the perfect size and I like the big steering wheel. It feels like exotic or classic. And it's so thin, like razor thin. What do you think of the long shifter? The long shifter is great. It, I think you need it. And it's so close to the steering wheel that I think it's perfect placement for this. Let's talk about steering. There is no power steering, so it definitely takes some weight, which is good, but it's, everything's authentic. Like there's nothing fake about it, obviously. You feel every bump in the road like literally everything. You go over a pothole, the steering wheel shakes. It's a real driving experience. Well, there aren't really any potholes here in Germany. Well, I'm hitting- like, like cracks in the road. Yeah, cracks in the road. Or, or a cobblestone road, but it is surprisingly comfortable. It is actually. So the suspension is overall good. It actually handles pretty good. We're not gonna push the limits, not even close, because we don't wanna wreck this thing. No, but I felt very, I felt more sporty in this than I have in a ma the majority of cars we drive. Yeah, it definitely feels sporty. It definitely feels relatively modern for like suspension wise. Yeah, for sure. Like the damping is actually done well. <laughs> And one thing we obviously haven't mentioned, in case everyone does not know, this is air-cooled. 
Porsches were air-cooled. That's why everybody loved Porsches for the longest time until the 90s when they switched over to water-cooled. But this is air-cooled. So when you drive in traffic, you got to watch your temperature gauge. Yes. So there's no coolant that goes through the engine through a radiator. The wind cools the engine. Exactly. So you got to keep driving it. And a quick note about that engine, that's actually from the 911T of the time. So the six-cylinder got the 911 engine. And these were in production from 1969 to 1975. Yeah, apparently they didn't do too well at a race that Porsche usually does well at, so they canceled it. <laughs> yeah, that's the funniest thing ever. And then they didn't bring mid-engine back until the Boxster. That's right. Which is Roadster and Boxster put together. Yes, and we reviewed the GTS last year, and that was a lot of fun. So let's move into some interior stuff. Let's do this. Start with the seats. The seats are actually pretty comfortable. No bolstering. No but yeah, bolstering at all. You're no. low down to the ground, but they are comfy. Not much padding, though. And they're stylish looking. Like, I wish we had these seats in newer cars instead of all the kind of crazy stuff we get now. Yeah, I agree. And then our dashboard is pretty plain, leather wrap. We've got very basic heating and cooling that only comes up through the top on the dashboard. And we have a Porsche radio in here. It is a newer Porsche one, so it actually has a GPS in it. But the other one had the old radio, which had Volkswagen buttons because it was a Volkswagen. That's right. And we should probably get to some important tests. Yeah, we should. Visor test. Let's, um, it does not move. There's no need for three, two, one. Fail. <laughs> How about the cup test? Uh, we have water bottles today. There are no cup holders, but they fit nicely in the plastic panel. Yes, they do. And box test, we already told you this stuff's not going to fit anything. Yeah, it won't fit a box. It won't fit our bags. But it might fit older, slightly flatter carry-on. <laughs> it probably would. Like, there's a surprising amount of room in here for what this is. There is. It's like, true. With the spare tire up front and everything, you could fit a lot in here. All the controls are very simple. We have pop-up headlights on the left. We have our ignition on the left. We have our turn signals, all that regular stuff. Super easy to unclip the target top. We've got a cigarette lighter. And I just caught myself looking in my non-existent side view mirror. Yes, so this only has the driver's side one. Because that was legal back in the day. Yeah, probably something to do with aerodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they just didn't want to buy more mirrors. I feel like it was an option, who and, knows? And then the coolest thing, We've got a pop-out ashtray. Oh yeah, I would love to have a cigar right now. I thought it was gonna be a pop-out cup holder like the new 911s, but who am I kidding? Yeah, exactly. And that's pretty much it with the interior. It's pretty basic, but it's classic car -y and it's very cool Porsche. It's nice seeing stuff from here that's in the newer 911s. Yeah, it's definitely an experience to drive this. Like, it's, it's crazy to drive this, especially on these twisty back roads. Like, cliche Germany corner is actually pretty intense. It is like a go-kart, isn't it? It's kind of like a go-kart with the stiffest steering ever. So overall, driving this is just the craziest experience because it's just, it's so cool to see where cars have come from where they were. My favorite part about it is you're bringing art to the masses. Yeah, exactly. Everyone gets to see this on the road. You got to put in a lot of work to make it work and to keep it on the road. The work part is the coolest part. Like, I actually have to work to drive this. I'm in the wrong gear half the time and it's it, it's fine like it's it's work you got to pay a lot of money to give people the gift of seeing it on the road so let's get to the price yeah so this started about 12,000 marks i believe deutsche marks at the time and currently the six cylinder models are going for approximately over a hundred thousand euros for a glorified go-kart with a ton of heritage yes exactly but like why not it's it's really cool like it's I hate saying that it's just really cool, but the experience and everybody's attention that it grabs, it's just awesome. And everybody knows Porsches are like super expensive right now, so there's nothing you can really do about it, but it's... And everybody wants classic Porsches right now. Most people want 911s, so these are probably the ones that are just going to keep going higher and higher next. Okay, would you take this over a 911? I don't think I would. Neither would I. No chance. Even though 911s are way more common, this just doesn't have that same mm for me. But every time I see one of these on the road now, my respect for it and my joy is going to be a million times more than it used to be. Exactly. And it still has that Porsche sound, that air-cooled six-cylinder sound. It sounds really cool. And we got our glass window back here. I like it. Yeah. So let us know if you have a classic Porsche, especially a 914. We want to hear all about it and send us the pictures on Instagram, Yuri Teresh in the straight pipes. Follow us on Instagram. Watch all of our adventures, especially when we're in Germany because we love coming here. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Check out patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Join our YouTube membership and check out Teespring for swag. Should we do more classic cars? Let us know. I would love to. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that.